Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Woodbine Play of the Day. For Sunday, May the 20th, I'm Dan Illman, along with Woodbine Racing Analyst Don Lupel. Let's take a look at the field for the feature race at Woodbine on Sunday. It's race number eight, and it's the $100,000 belayed stakes. For three-year-old fillies and mares and some really nice synthetic sprinters, our Woodbine Play of the Day also doubles up as our DRF Race of the Day, which means you can access free formulator pass performances on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Download them and handicap along with Don and me, we're going to take a look at this field in post position order, beginning with Scotty's model. And Don, you could argue that Scotty's model is the one to beat. I'm going to argue that. I'm just going to, going to argue what price I expect to get in order to play this horse. I do think she's the one to beat. I think the inside post position is going to be okay for her running style. She has defeated some of these mares before. She overall has a great record. And uh, at this point, I'm waving the white flag. I'm not picking against Norm McKnight. Norm McKnight's winning at an unbelievable rate. He tried yes. Scotty's model down on the dirt at Oakland. She ran okay down there against some tough competition, but this is what she wants to do. We'll take a look at her most recent race. That was the grade three whimsical, and she was running at the end of that race. You give her some pace, you know she's going to fire, and I agree with you. She is the one to beat. The number two is Blurricane, and Blurricane's making her seasonal debut, and I wonder if she's going to need one, but she's a real honest mare when she's right, a nine-time winner. She is, and I, I suspect she might need one. It's hard to say, though, because this is another barn den that's doing extremely well. Uh, Marty Drexler's horses have been well prepped, and she's tough. This is her distance. She loves it. Five wins at the trip. Uh, she could be a challenger, too. And Jerome Larmite's not getting a lot of rides, but he's been uh, finishing in the money. I'm a big fan of the number three, Silent Sonnet. This is a lightly raced four-year-old, and I think she's got some upside potential. I'm a little concerned that she might be a little bit better on the turf. We're going to take a look at, uh, we saw her race against Scotty's model last time out, but her race in the La Prevoyant three starts back, I thought was a tremendous performance on the grass. And her seasonal debut, maybe she was just a little bit short. I'm expecting her to move forward second off the bench. Yeah, absolutely. She has that to her. She's a good-looking filly. I suspect she might be better on turf uh, like you do, but uh, there's nothing wrong with her. She could be anything this year. Seasonal debut for a price source. That's up next, the number four, West L.A. Girl. And West L.A. Girl took on some top competition last time out. The winner of that race actually went down to Oaklawn Park and won on the dirt with a 77 buyer speed figure. But another mare that I wouldn't be surprised if they bring her back slowly this year. I agree with that. Uh, Patrick Husband's riding her again. He's had success with her. He seems to be able to time her move just perfectly, and she does have a good move, but I think you only want to use it once. And it is worth noting that she did win her seasonal debut off the layoff last year, but she's a one-run closer that needs a little bit of pace. Mm -hmm. Sugar Jones is the five, another horse going second off the layoff in here, and Sugar Jones didn't really break very well, I didn't think, in the whimsical, and maybe that cost her some chances, but as a closer, she's one that needs pace. Maybe the kind of horse I'd use underneath and exactors and triactors. I'm still trying to figure out where she is. I really like Sugar Jones. And when she's on, she's on. I'm just not sure that she's on yet. But she is four for six at the trip. I actually thought old Crumlin Spirit ran pretty well last time out. There wasn't a lot of pace. Little Christy kind of got away with a nice, easy lead. And Crumlin Spirit does what Crumlin Spirit does. She rallied <laughs> to finish second. Eight times second from 27 lifetime starts. She's an honest mare, but she's tough to trust on the win end. That's your exact play right there, Crumlin Spirit. Yes, if anyone's going to be second, it's most likely going to be her. I would probably never play her on top of an exactor for that reason, but she fits with these, and certainly for second or third, she's, uh, she's gold. Sparkle's girl won the Classy and Smart last year, and I thought she did it showing a nice tactical gear going two turns. But is that the key for her? Do you think she needs more distance than this six furlongs? I think in this field she does. You know, she's racing against these types of mares, definitely. I think she could overcome the distance with lesser competition. But in here, this isn't her best, and this is the best distance for most of the others. Code Warrior actually excels a little bit at slightly shorter distances. Turf, synth, it doesn't really matter to her. She looked good winning down at Gulfstream Park. Two starts back at five furlongs. Last time out, she was in tough. That runner-up, Just Talkin's a nice mare who came back to run third in the Captiva Island Stakes with a 91 buyer, then came back to win again with a 93 buyer. She fits real well from a class perspective, and she's always run well on the synth. I'm wondering, the barn is just having no momentum so far this spring, so I always think about things like that. She does get Louise Contreras today, and that's good. You know, she is a nice mare in her own right, but uh, boy, talk about a slug.
cash stable right now. Listen, Linda, listen, the number nine coming off of September layoff. So there's some substantial time off since her most recent race. When she's right, she does have speed. The same question with several of the others, though. Is this sort of a prep for something longer down the road? Something longer and maybe something, um, I'm not sure, a little bit uh, less difficult. I, I, she's nice. She has to make that transition, though, that tough age transition now facing some really nice mares. She showed a lot last year, but she definitely has to step it up, and she can. There's, there's no doubt she could. And we just saw her winning the Eternal Search Stakes two starts back, the last time she stepped on a synthetic surface. Little Christie's the number 10. She completes this field. We talked about her. We're going to watch her beat Crumlin Spirit last time out off of a long layoff. But I really thought she took advantage of a nice, easy pace. And I'm not sure that same situation arises. She'll be forward, but will she be loose? I don't think so. I really don't think so. And we have some real closing specialists here. So it would have to probably be a pronounced track bias for her to win and this track just very rarely favors speed to that extent it's such a fun race on sunday where are you going with your top tout <laughs> i'm going inside to scotty's model i already tipped my hat i am taking the eight horse code warrior in my exacta play and uh, the three silent sonic gets a mention too but uh, you know we talked about that exacta specialist the six crumbling spirit might not want to leave her out. I'll take a shot with Silent Sonnet. Big fan of her win three starts back on turf. Little concerned that maybe she's going to be a turf filly down the road, but I think she needed her last start sprinting, and she's got enough tactical speed to be close when the field swings into the stretch. She's 5-1 to one on the morning line. Dawn, always fun talking to you. Great analysis, ah. as always. We'll see you next week. Sounds good to me.